There's no place like home. Ah, that's what Dorothy says. That's right. And you know what? Even people who don't have red ruby slippers do have the feeling of wanting to return home, mm. like it's an essential place to be. And those of us who do have red ruby slippers also feel that that's way. That's right. Yes. They just do it with more style. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I mean, <laughs> that's you're welcome. I, that's what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Of course, of course. Um, <laughs> and that classic of of having this adventure. Let's just stick with the Wizard of Oz. You know, she 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 goes uh, on on so many uh, different kinds of experiences that challenge you know her from what she you know is expecting life to be and how things should be and and she has to develop and grow herself along the way. Mm-hmm. And it's really interesting that in the in the movie version where you know they they do return uh, back to Kansas they they take the color away again yeah uh, but she's retained the things that she gathered on the way right mm-hmm. um, even when she's saying and you were there and you were there and and I, I like to think that even though the movie depicts her in this more desaturated world that we began with there still remains all of those colors within Dorothy. Mm-hmm. Uh, because of the journey she went on. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is observed in the hero's journey. Uh, the, the step is called the crossing of the return threshold, a little bit of a clumsy phrase. But what it gets to is the hero returns to where they came from after they've been transformed by their journey. Ah. And there's a challenge involved in in doing that. And I know that I can relate to that to some degree in my own life. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you can as well. I and can, just for yeah, uh, yeah. yeah and, and I'm sure our listeners can can also. I mean, this would apply to any kind, any time that, I mean, even like when you go away for, for summer camp one year and you return to school and like, right. you know, maybe right. you've had your growth spurt or yep. somebody else has changed or you're going through puberty and like, it's, you know, you, you're returning to a lot of familiar things, but you are essentially different. Yes. And yeah, things aren't ever going to really be the same. That's not a bad thing. It's just part of the journey. And, uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to be focusing on today. And also for you listeners and followers out there who are keeping track of the steps we're making on the hero's journey, we're coming to the end pretty soon. And there's a couple steps that we're not going to uh, make a part of our conversation because they don't really blend uh, well to a conversation. Uh, but, yeah, so we're just going to have a, a few more uh, steps of the hero's journey to go. And then we'll keep the heart of the cards going, but we're going to move on to some other things. Ooh, exciting. So Yeah. 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 Um, and we'll have some more uh, guests to talk with as well. We got Mike Pollock coming up soon. Um, and we got a whole long list of others um, that uh, we're, we're eager to talk to. So the heart of the cards will continue. Um, even though the hero's journey will be concluding soon. And with that said, yeah, are you ready to get into this? I am. Let's get to it. There's no place like home. Welcome to the Heart of the Cards, a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what we're dealt. Hey, this is Dan Green. And Eric Stewart. And we are so happy that you are with us for episode 16. Oh, sweet 16. It's, it is pretty sweet. It's like we've been doing this for a little while. I know, right? <laughs> it's crazy. And yeah, yeah, I, I, I like it. And in in this conversation uh, with the crossing of the return threshold, like we were talking about at the beginning, um, it's it's what do you do when you've been changed by your experience in a positive way? Like, you know, you've, you've made the efforts to grow in a certain way, to attain a certain thing, to achieve something that's going to change you mm-hmm. in, in, in some regard. And there's this need everyone has, I think, to reconnect to where they came from. This is the experience of how do those things blend? How do they not blend? And 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 what's that like? Do you? I know for some people, uh, I used to experience this myself. When I'm back with my family, it's like I regress. I like I'm like right. who I was right. <laughs> as a little kid. Yep. Um, but I eventually stopped doing that, and then it becomes okay. So how do we how do we renegotiate these familiar patterns? Um, and it also doesn't necessarily have to do with the literal uh, home, right? Even though it is often in relationship to that, it doesn't have to be precisely your home. Uh, but again, um, I'm sure we we all have our own experiences of this kind of thing. So, Eric, yes. did you want to start off for today? Yeah, I, I do. I do. This is a good topic. I, I like this. Um, I would say that for me, one of the um, changes that I had to deal with was 
when I decided to make the move from New York to Nashville, um, mm-hmm. coming from the the craziness of the city, the 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 high pressure, the right, the, right, the nonstop right. um, mm-hmm. that environment to following my passion of really focusing on the music and coming to Music City, um, mm-hmm. and making that huge shift, but then coming home. My, you know, my parents still live in, right. in Brooklyn and, and, and a lot of my friends. Yeah, so for, it, it, it's literally a return home for you. Yeah. I mean, with that, yeah. Right. I mean, the, the, the concept is yes, both, both literal and figuratively. Um, it's, it's, it's the, it's both, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, you don't really know what you're dealing with until you step away from it. And then, yeah. right? So, you know, growing up in New York. And New York is very absorbing. Well, and also, like, New York, when you grow up in New York City, you really think you are in the center of the world. I don't just mean yeah, the center yeah. of America. You really believe, yes, we have a reputation of being kind of obnoxious. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, what we're surrounded by and and, and the things that are, are, are available to, to you when you grow mm-hmm. up like that, um, you really are spoiled. And, you know... Making this big shift to Nashville, making this change in even just the pace of life Mm. um, and stepping away from the madness for a while. Um, When I came back, not just um, how I uh, was feeling in terms of what was going on around me as just even like now being basically a a visitor um, to New mm-hmm. York City, um, and of course things evolve and things change. You 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 see you know like things that the, the, your favorite restaurant doesn't exist anymore, or your or oh well, what what this this neighborhood that was just like you know this terrible disgusting scary neighborhood is now an <laughs> overpriced you know uh, place to live yeah. and whatever. Yeah. Um, so there's always that going on. That's New York City, but it really was hard for me to to go up there and spend any more than four or five days. There, mm. I felt overwhelmed by everything, sensory mm-hmm. overload, uh, mm-hmm. from the traffic to the noise to, you know, I lived and my parents still live there in Brooklyn, but I, but like I grew up, um, on the top floor of an apartment building. And when I say top floor, I'm talking 31st floor of an apartment building. And mm. I, you know, I, I, I heard street noise and whatever, cause it just would come straight up the side of the building. And, and as a kid, you know, I had music playing so I could drown that stuff out, but I could deal with it. Sirens, you know, screaming mm-hmm. the occasional mm-hmm. gunshot, not that I lived in a scary neighborhood. So there wasn't a lot of that, but, but whatever uh, the crazy mm-hmm. noises from the, from New York city were part of my, you know, environment. Well, yeah, going yeah. back now and this is of course just one little small part of it but going back now like i can't sleep it's too noisy (laughs) it's it's you you know you want to open the window to get fresh air and yet you're letting in all that noise it's like okay but everything is sensory overload for me and i didn't realize that right until i lived in an area that was uh, of the country that's quieter and I can have some isolation. I can have some some sort of slower paced uh, lifestyle, and also doing what I love here and in a in a sort of um, more creative environment with less of that going on around me. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like I have changed in terms of my dynamic. Now, I will always be a Brooklyn boy. And if you push me too far, you will definitely experience that side that's part of my DNA. But I think you can attest to this because we've spent a lot of time together (laughs) over the many, many years that we've been friends. Um, I I am a different person. I am a different person since I've moved down here. Absolutely. I mean, yes, there's also the addition of, you know, having uh, my, my beautiful wife by my side, Lindsay, who has definitely softened, you know, tough Eric. But when my best friends and my close, my close uh, friends and my family all say, you've truly mellowed. Um, right, right. It's, it's part of the following my, my passion, but it's yeah. also the change of environment. And I think that that's a big, um, that's a big shift. And it's also... It's. I don't enjoy going back to New York for too long. Mm-hmm. I I love to see my family, uh, but I I 
I get edgy even just getting on the plane going there and <laughs> thinking about yeah, like yeah. when when you're planning your departure before you leave, like when you're planning how long it's going to take to get to the airport and what time you need to leave before you even get there, that should tell you something about the stress level that's part of visiting New York City. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And when I do talk about you behind your back, which I do a lot of. Oh, that's okay. I always am complimenting you in regards of this mellowing process, as you put it. And it was really interesting to see over the course of several years. So as I recall it, we actually started hanging out more um, shortly after my wife died. Mm -hmm. And but you had the bright idea of me appearing with you at a, at a convention. Um, and it wasn't that we weren't in touch prior to that, of course not. Um, but I think that, that started, uh, our, our relationships growth into, into a broader friendship. Yes. Right. Yes. And I think at that time you were working through some of the hardest parts of your transition from, from your first marriage mm -hmm. to, to then being single for a while. And, yep. and then, of course, obviously you have uh, the wonderful Lindsay in your life. And so, but but even then you had already started to mellow because you had been in Nashville for a number of years. Right. Uh, not a lot, not not a super, like what was it, like four years or maybe so? Yeah, probably something like that, yeah. Something like that. So it's certainly not an insignificant amount of time. But, but you continue to broaden, I mean, mellow, I, I completely agree with that. That's a perfectly fine adjective. But I also think of, I think more that you've broadened or opened. And um, I feel like there's more of you available. Well, I appreciate um, you saying that. I mean, I, 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 you know, you and I, when we are not doing our podcasts, we talk mm -hmm. about everything. I mean, we are, <laughs> we, true. we are very open with one it's another. True. Um, I consider you one of my closest friends. And I do too. And, um, you know, I'm not like that with many people. I have I have mm -hmm. not been someone that shares how he feels other than in my creativity and other in my mm -hmm. songwriting. I do not sit there and spill my guts to everyone that I know. Um, right. And and what I think what this environment and what this kind of uh, change in lifestyle for me has done is it has brought down some of those walls um mm -hmm. you know there's there are examples of people that i have met in, in this journey that truly are just good nice people not that there aren't where i come from but <laughs> i feel like there's less of an agenda with some of the people i've met down here mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it sort of taught me that hey you know um you can share things with these people. You can be open with these people. It's okay to do that. Um, they're not going to, you know, find the chink in the armor and go right after you with, 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 with where you're vulnerable. Um, and mm -hmm. that's, I'm not making a glo you know, I'm not trying to make a global statement about everyone in Nashville. We have the sharks down here. They just wear cowboy boots instead of, uh, um, you know, um, uh, pointy good, Italian good shoes, right? <laughs> good to know. Right? Uh, but no, I, I, I agree. I think, I think, you know, I use the word mellow because it's softened my, it, it has softened my, um, sure. my reaction. It's, it's totally uh, applicable. To, right? My yeah. reaction uh, 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 level and, uh, and how short my fuse is. Um, right. But uh, yeah, it's, I, I, you know, I never thought I would get to a place where I could not live in New York City. Like, I couldn't go right. back. I <laughs> right. I think the la I think maybe two trips ago I said to Lindsay as we were making our way to the airport in way too much traffic for the distance we needed to travel. I said yeah. to her, I've reached that point now. I don't think I could live there again. I just right. don't. I don't think Eric of today would fit in and be comfortable there. And that's not necessarily a bad thing you know new york eric yeah. was was yeah. what you know he was good for that but nashville eric um i just i feel like i'm i'm enjoying i'm happier more i feel it's lighter i feel right, and that right. and that's and that's a hard thing to come back to because there's definitely people who i would interact with and i'd work with and i'd 
let's just say, also put up with, that I don't- hey, I'm right here. That, yeah, all right. I know, I know. But, but you're far <laughs> enough away that you can't hit me. Um, but but th- that I just, I don't, I don't interact with anymore. I don't right. feel that that's right. a, those are necessary relationships that I have to be part of or that I even- I even fit in with anymore, Mm -hmm. you know, the change. So that's definitely a, um, that's definitely a a, a challenge when it's presented. But uh, yeah, that's, that would be my story is, uh, is coming back to New York after living in Nashville for 10 plus years is definitely Mm -hmm. um, a new person in, in an old home. To make concise what you, what you just shared with us, your solution to to returning, you know, going crossing back over that return threshold. Yes, um, gotta gotta talk to Campbell about that. Just just really, it's not a <laughs> very. I know phrase. in all of the yeah, names he's, he's of his things, on, like but, that uh, one is kind of like uh, yeah, like Call I, to Adventure is I, great. I, but... I threw the thesaurus up to the wall, and and those words <laughs> stuck. <laughs> That reminds me of Stephen Wright. Um, you know, he just is so clever, and he's like, "What's well, another word for thesaurus?" <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so for you, the solution is moderation. Mm-hmm. You can go there, but you can't stay there. Right. Yes. Yes. That's the solution. And I think in in a lot of these mythological stories, part of uh, what you see is the the protagonist, the hero, returns, and they have this gift from their journey that, in some way, revolutionizes or revitalizes the home they came from, which is a lovely story. Mm-hmm. And I th- I think I could skew uh, a view of my life in a way that that fits that narrative to a degree. Uh-huh. Uh, but f- but for you, it's it's really more. I'm coming back. But I, I need to be able to to go back to my new home, my new stasis. And you're not trying to change New York City. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Which I would agree is. I don't have enough time. <laughs> it's simply. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I love New York. I grew up in, in suburbs and and then eventually moved to New York in my young adulthood. And now that I've returned to the suburbs. I I also feel like I probably wouldn't go back to the city, or maybe I would, but like not with kids, right? right. But you also, I mean, you know, we're we're like we're the flip, uh, 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 you know, stories of each sure. other that way. Right, right, but like right. you know, I I grew up in the city, wishing that I had like a lawn to play in, like you know, like, exactly, you know, or and I and, I probably, I mean, realistically, I, I don't think I would actually go back to the city, but I don't hate the city, right? But I, I I'm just much more comfortable in a, in a suburban mode, yeah. Um, and anyway. But, um, and it's in, I meant to say this before, be, when I went to the city, because I, wa- I hadn't grown up there, I did notice the arrogance of New Yorkers believing like they're in the center of the universe. Mm-hmm. But after living there for just even a couple years, I, I understood why that perception develops because there is so much to the city. Yes. Yes. And there is no, I love New York City. There's nothing, nothing like it. That's true. Um, that's true. London has a little vibe that's similar, but it's they're really two different things. Um, anyway, so that's so that's I think that's a really interesting way to to manage that balance of who you've become and and where you came from. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people could probably resonate with that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. so what about you? And so for yeah. well, so for me, um, I'm going to liken it to my experience of of learning uh, uh, what it was to become a young man. And that involved a bit of what I wanted to do with my life in terms of of being an actor, uh, but also possessing my identity just as, uh, as, as my own thing. So I think a big part of growing up has to do with defining and owning yourself. And, and, that is uh, an inevitable process to to growing up. If that if that hasn't been done, I think we see examples of that. People who who feel like they never really grew up, mm-hmm. and that's kind of <laughs> sad. <laughs> and um, and so for me, 
that double whammy of uh, and and I think this is common for people. I don't think this is unique to me. But you when you when you find a path for your life and career, career doesn't mean making money, but we think of it that way, right? But career means what you do with your life, right? That's the the focus, the 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 agenda, the work focus uh, of what you do, and. So for me, it was being an actor specifically, yes, but I was so grateful that I learned about what it meant to be an artist. So the, the broader category under which acting fits. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, it was like a fish finding water. It was, I felt normalized when I understood what the attitudes, what the drives, what the eccentricities and idiosyncrasies are mm-hmm. of of an artist. I felt like finally my people, my tribe. Right. right. And and uh and which is not to say that uh all of my neuroses are were great things. Um uh, but but is to say that I, I felt like I, I found where I belonged, mm-hmm. you know? And my family was very loving and supportive in many ways. But I was different. I was different than my siblings. And not just because of my gender. And so having that that permission, that allowance, that affirmation of those parts of myself definitely changed my perspective on what I thought I should do with my life. Not just in terms of pursuing acting, but what, for me, I learned that being an artist meant on a on a very real and fundamental level not being concerned with making money hmm. which was kind of at odds with where i was going in the industry my agents <laughs> they used to joke man it's like you want to go all the way to the middle <laughs> as opposed to all the way to the top <laughs> i just I like wanted that. a modest I, like right? I wanted a modest life doing material. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I I would much rather right. have the consistency of work than the the roller coaster of like, wow, yes. we made a lot of money yeah. and now I'm making no money, right? Or yeah, I got all or, this fame and then I have no fame. It's like I just want to be like, yeah, we know who he is. Yeah, he does a great exactly job, me. right? Right? I just yeah, I wanted to work with like, you know, like a, a repertory company of actors, yeah. people that I could know and have community with. So you're uh, so you're the, acting, so you're acting your new acting persona, your your discovery of that did not come with because I, I mean I really know the answer to this question but this is for the fan base so that they also <laughs> sure. understand um, sure. did not come with arrogance you did not come back home with this you know no. sort of snooty I'm an actor now you didn't do that no 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 I didn't and I I wouldn't say that there was uh, I, I was completely without some feeling of elitism in that I felt like in my in my family, there are a lot of well educated people. Yes, we have we have a lot of doctors in my family, not medical doctors, but PhD people, mm-hmm. and also people who have you know good respectable careers. But nobody in my family had done the kind of work that I was doing. So in a way, I felt like I had mastery over a domain, and I knew it was something that my mom really respected. Yeah. So, and my dad probably would have too. Mm-hmm. So. So it, I I did feel special, I guess, in that way, but not lording it over people. And my ambition was never, no. ever, well, to be famous. Knowing you the way I do, uh, I would not, I would not think that that was part of something that you um, no. uh, wore on the outside. I just didn't know if that was something that yeah. even internally you thought. Well, now that I've discovered this craft and that I'm good at doing right. this craft, um, right. and this is who I am now, um, did that come with um, at least that right, feeling? That- you know, yeah. Yeah, so um, not looking down on people, but always feeling different than mm-hmm. I think is a, in, in within my own family. Right, but it but it was it was a bit of a challenge for me and them to find this new balance. Like, oh, he's not a kid anymore, and and uh, and he's pursuing this thing. Where I mean, the chances of success are like so low. Right. Um, but again, everybody was everybody was supportive, and I was getting work. Right out of the gate, so mm-hmm. you know it wasn't a, a horror story, um, but um, that in combination with what I was learning about myself and and also my family dynamics, while I was I was still doing therapy very frequently, and uh, and um, 
refusing to take back certain roles or certain modes of being、mm-hmm. was a big, big shift. And this primarily was happening、uh, with my mom. And、uh, when I bucked up against certain expectations of of hers, it not only created a paradigm shift between the two of us. But it started to ripple out a paradigm shift in our nuclear family. Interesting, and also our wider family. So yeah, and、um, I'm not going to drop any sort of、uh, tabloid right hot goss here.、No. But to put it generally, I was the one in my family who stood up to my mom the most. Right, right, and and I, and I'm not saying that every time I did, I was in the right. But many times, I believe I was,、mm-hmm. and and that helped to balance things out. I think I've also said、uh, my sisters and I were so amazed at how much my our mom mellowed after she retired.、Mm-hmm. It's like she really became so much more of herself, and so much less of this really stressed out, mission oriented woman of action, <laughs> right, right, <laughs>、uh, um, that you don't want to disappoint or get in the way of, and so. Yeah, so that integration for me was was necessary. But I mean, my family gathers、uh, at least once a year, and by gather, I mean there's like twenty five of us. Wow.、Um, and then and then we have、uh, some years it's twice a year because we we will do Christmas together, right? So you know, one Christmas with the family family, and then the other you know people who are married <laughs> get、yes, Christmas、yes. with the with the spousal family,、mm-hmm. the in laws,、um, but.、Uh, Yeah, and and so having that that integration was was a necessity for me. Now, did you and, find did you find、mm-hmm. that your did did friends of yours notice? Also, friends for yeah. Did they yeah, notice the change? Some, did, yeah, some and some friends fall away, right? Which I think is only natural. Yes,、um, and and other friends、um, like the one. Who I made that Indiana Jones、mm-hmm. adventure thing for,、yeah. um, and also my oldest friend, who like we were, I mean, we were in diapers at the same age、uh, and got to know each other then, going way back. I I saw her、uh, at Halloween, and it's like no time has passed, right? Right. I can just talk to her at any, you know. So that th- that wasn't such a, a a difficult transition, but other friends, yeah, you know, I just I I was. Not only am I different than who I was,、uh, but probably more relevantly, I'm different than who they want me to be.、Mm-hmm. You know, yes,、um, not not in a vicious way, right? But、uh, I don't I don't think I have anybody out there who really knows me that hates me.、Um, <laughs> Now, did you also find that certain <laughs> friends recognized this change and celebrated it with you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like the the two friends I just mentioned. Yeah, they were like all they were all about that. Yeah, great. They think it's you know they think it's great. That's great. Um, yeah. So, but it really, you know, I think, is a challenge when you recognize that you've become something more. How do you fit into these these old pegs, right? The、um, and、uh, well, I guess the peg is the thing you put in. I guess yes.、Yeah. So、how do you fit into those old <laughs> slots? Yes, you've changed your peg. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this is not a work analogy worth. No, going no, no, no. We're, we're not playing with the blocks anymore.、Um, but,、okay. I, but, but I mean that that ever evolving kind of、uh, approach to life. Like I, I always hope that each day I'm learning something new and experiencing something new, and、um, you know, we can still be,、uh, you know, consistent. I mean, yes, all my socks. Match, you know what I mean.、Um, so I can get dressed in the dark.、Um, I, I, all my socks match; yeah, they're all dirty.、Yeah. <laughs> but, but just you know, yes, I'm. I am definitely a creature of 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 that of consistency with many things. But I also want to. I want to believe that you know, as we travel in life, we are also constantly using our brains to evolve and and learn. And so, you know,、yeah. these are major changes. But you know,、right. there's still the daily ones where you know you you hopefully have those moments where you say, yeah, okay, this is what's now important. This is what I'm gonna focus on. This is who I am now, and these things are things that I, I don't need to do anymore. And these things are things I didn't even know were out there that I want to do now. Right, right. Well, and I, I pointed to that example where in some of these mythologies. The returning protagonist revolutionizes or changes to some degree, reinvigorates the home they came from, 
And without aggrandizing myself, I do think some of my successes in my journey have had positive feedback in my family. I mentioned before, you know, my sister's perhaps felt more emboldened to, to seek therapy of their own. Um, and, but, but also, uh, people in my family, uh, uh, giving permission to, you know, our, their artistic sides or whatever. Again, I don't know that I'm directly related to that, sure. but, but I definitely was one of the forerunners as an example. Yeah. You know, and I think that that's, and, I think that's important too. I mean, that's, that's something that you should definitely, you should own, you should be proud of because, you know, that's a, that's a way to also, pay it forward like you benefited yeah. from your experience and now right. someone else is going to also benefit from your example i feel the same way with you know some of the the choices i've made and some of the the you know fun cool things i've done in in both of my careers musically and also uh, in the voiceover world where someone looks at what i've accomplished and says hey like i'm going to follow my passion because I want to experience things like you did, um, or, you know, not be afraid to try things. Um, you know, my wife is doing that right now. What, you know, uh, getting, she's working on a, a film shoot this week and, um, just, just being involved in that, the experience of it. It's like, how do people get into this business? I don't know. How do they do it? They, how do they do it? They go and do it. <laughs> That's how they do it. Like right, just go. Right. Like I had no plan, um, and I did all of these things. I I just had a plan of, I want to do these things, so I'll figure it out. And um, I think that both of us have had these kinds of lives that, hopefully, have um, touched people where they feel like you know what, I you know this is a good example. Not that we've done mm -hmm. everything right, but we have. Right. We it's rubbed off. It's osmosis. Right. We've we've given back. Right. Right. Well, as Campbell would observe that if you save yourself, you save the world. Mm -hmm. Be if, you know, by example or simply by example of being a more alive person within that world. And yeah, and I think that's true in this example that y your creativity has spoken to so many people. And but but also you bring something else to the to the home that you return to. Mm -hmm. Uh, having having been successful in, in those journeys. Right. So right. that's great. Good. Great story. Yeah. Let's bring uh, this episode to a close. Yeah. Sure. But um, thanks again, Eric. Yeah. Uh, you too, for, Dan. For sharing. Yes. Thank you. And as always, we are grateful for you listeners and followers that uh, help to make all of this so much more worth doing. Um, I mean, Eric and I like talking to each other, but including everybody else exactly. in is really a lot of fun. <laughs> exactly. Oh, you know what, though, Dan? There is something I just want to remind people to do, though. What is that? Could they just click the like button? If you know, I the mean, button? I like you, you like me, but do they like us? I like us? you. Yes, they need to. I like liking. Just like yes. Let's do some more I like liking. Buttons. Yes, thank yes, you. Yes, I like the like thing. Right. Um, and we also have a Patreon, Andromeda Productions. Go to Patreon, look for Andromeda Productions. If you are in a position to uh, contribute as little as a dollar a month, it would help. As Eric and I really want Andromeda Productions to be the main thing we do. And to bring you lots of goodness. Yeah, we have some fun stuff that we're working on. So thank you for That's that. Thank true. you for everyone who's been supporting us so far. We really appreciate it. Yes, we are very blessed to have you with us. And we will look forward to the next time we have a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what you're dealt. Thanks for listening to The Heart of the Cards with Dan Green and Eric Stewart. We hope this conversation in some way spoke to you. Whatever your journey, we look forward to crossing paths again in the next episode. This is Veronica Taylor, and on behalf of Andromeda Productions, we wish you well. Andromeda, always a sound choice. <laughs>